Welcome back to the morning show here on our Rice News. The face of every democracy is the lawmakers. To ensure there are checks and balances on the president's powers so he does not become a dictator. Yesterday, Nigeria's democracy was threatened with a siege by armed security operatives who blocked lawmakers from assessing the legislative chamber. Joining us to discuss the developing story is Senator Ganiu Solomon, a leading member of the ruling All Progressive Congress Party. Welcome to the morning show, Senator. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good Good morning. morning. Senator well, thank you, Senator. I, I introduced you earlier as the person yeah. representing Lagos West. I, I, I probably forgot that yeah. you, are, you are now a former senator. A former senator. But once a right. senator, a always, a, senator. A, always a senator. Correct. It's yeah. uh, Yayi, Adiola Yayi, Yayi who is now in Lagos, Lagos West. Yes. But I mean, you are still a leading member of the uh, APC, APC fact, and a right. major power broker in the uh, Mushini uh, constituency, okay. Surulere area. <laughs> I'll come to that later. Okay. So, so be prepared. All but right. look, yesterday was very interesting in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, some uh, men from the Department of State Security mm -hmm. stormed the National, National Assembly. Assembly yes. yes. Uh, people who wanted to uh, access that assembly, including workers and lawmakers, couldn't do so. And there was this ugly scene you know, all over the place. Uh, what's your take on that development? Well, um, we, at any point in time, should promote the, um, the institution, because the National Assembly is an institution, and the situation where we have um, the violation of the sanctity of National Assembly should be condemned. And uh, I, at this point, I, I want to I praise the attitude um, of the vice president, the acting president, by coming out and condemning in very strong terms the, the siege on the National Assembly. And uh, that uh, does not explain who and who is responsible for it, uh, because we have various versions that um, is done to protect or to, to prevent um, the PDP uh, senators or senators that are not um, in support of the of the president. I, I think it may be too premature to say that. Maybe when we have a full report, because we were not shown a situation where senators from other sides were allowed in. So it's a, a siege that affected everybody, staff, senators, members of the National Assembly. But be that as it may, the most important thing is to condemn that attitude, whoever is responsible for it. But that okay, wh why the siege? I, I know you say there are different versions, That's but right. the National Assembly is on recess, yes. it's on vacation. Yes. So why will you go and lock down well, uh, we, the we, place we, when that, the people are on vacation? Why, right. That is why I said um, we, we will take or we depend on the good judgment of the acting president and his integrity by right, coming out to say that it's not um, approved from the presidency and that is condemnable and that uh, highly condemned. That shows that it must be from somebody or some group of people lower than the presidency, if that can be used, lower than the presidency. No, but uh, there's a story in uh, this day, yes. a story behind the story, as uh, Emmanuel Efeni pointed out earlier on. Uh, that the DG uh, SSS, who has been removed, told the acting president that he got orders from above. No, we, we, but we So not, who is that person and, uh, because <laughs> that I is read, higher than the acting president? Exactly. I read the story myself. And the, uh, the, the acting president mm. was also said to have asked that who is that higher authority? Correct. Or, or higher than the acting president, because as the acting president, he assumes all the powers of the president while Already acting. delegated, exactly. duly delegated. So nobody comes before him, maybe after him, nobody comes before him, and such power should emanate from him. And if he rejected it, then that is why I said maybe when we hear the full stories, mm -hmm. maybe right now we, we are just having conjectures, we are having... Uh, a, a lot of uh, versions. Where well, PDP uh, senators are saying there was a plan, that there was a meeting at the Transcorp building the previous night uh, between certain, among certain people uh, involving also the Department of State Security, and that the plan, the original plan was to 
convene the uh, National Assembly, that will have been illegal, of course, without the uh, key persons involved, and to impeach the, the Senate, Senate President, President. Well, and his uh, deputy. Well, the, 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 the senators of the APC are quite experienced. And uh, the least experience out of them will have spent three and a half years, and they know what it takes to impeach a Senate president. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't have embarked on such a thing. And um, you also are aware that um, the president um, um, is requesting for um, this uh, budget, uh, supplementary budget. So how on earth will they want to stop? It will have been an opportunity even for them to have the supplementary budget considered. So why should the presidency will not want the National Assembly to sit in the first instance? Mm. So what we are having is different version depending on who is giving that story. So mm. coming from PDP is not unexpected. That is the version they will likely hold on to and sell to the general public. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> recently there's been a lot of defections, people moving from one party to another. Mm -hmm. The APC is now a shrinking party. And uh, what do you think is responsible for this? Well, um, having had the opportunity of being in the National Assembly mm -hmm. for, for three terms, um, this is the period when we have a lot of defections. Yes. And the, the, the fact is um, most members will know by now what are their chances of getting the ticket back okay. into the National Assembly. Because, of course, most people want to come back. Most people want to have their seats back. And um, what is happening in their locality, because as they say, all politics are local. Mm -hmm. You have to go back to your constituency, even if you are the speaker, if you are the Senate president, you still need to get the note from your constituency before you can become the president of even this, the speaker. Mm -hmm. So this is the time when you now look at your chances. What do I have? Do I have the chances? And most of these people across all political parties, when you have problems in your constituency, whether with the governor, whether the leadership of the party, whether with your community, they start looking for the way out. Mm -hmm. How do we go? It just happened that this time around, we, we, we have a situation where there are a group of people that wants to go the same way. And we've not had the last of it. After we have a series of um, primaries, mm. when the political parties have held their primaries, you will still have some people, when they are not given the tickets, going to some other parties, maybe parties that are quite mm. lesser known parties, just for them to have a ticket and participate in the election, trying their popularity. We've had instances when such people eventually get the seats. Mm. Um, Chukumerije tried it. He was the only candidate, the only uh, senator from his political party. He was not given the ticket in PDP. He went to another party. Okay. And Prisaya who also did the same thing. This in the seventh um, Senate. And uh, they were not given their ticket. They went to another party, a lesser known party, and they got the ticket. So it's not surprising to me that there are people who are moving because they, are, they might have considered the situation at home, at home constituency, and felt that, look, I'm not comfortable. Those people that are very comfortable with their constituency, are sure of getting their tickets, will not move at this time of the year. Well, Senator, let, let me ask you this. Um, we had Professor Patrick told me on this program yesterday. Yes. And he was saying politicians are defecting, not necessarily because they believe in any ideology or any principles. And you just seem to have confirmed yes. uh, what you said yesterday. Yes, yes, that is it. Except that there's a, there's a line or there's a um, dichotomy imagine now which we may start to consider. And that is um, progressive conservative. Because it's, it's becoming clearer. With some people moving back to the PDP is mm -hmm. like saying, look, we are conservative and uh, we won't go with the progressive. That line of demarcation is coming up gradually. And I won't be surprised that with time it will widen to the extent that we can now have to the right, the conservative, to the left, the progressive. 
Are, are you yourself planning to defect? I can never <laughs> defect. But in, I will remain in APC. Okay, great. But right now in Lagos, there's a lot of divided parties, correct? And um, which faction would you belong to? If in, in Lagos, there's one faction. There's no two factions in no, Lagos. No, let me no, rephrase that. that. Okay, please. The APC in Lagos yes. Yes. seems to be facing a very serious crisis. It's a lot I of problems. So. No, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> okay. I mean, we all uh, followed the yeah. recent uh, party uh, yeah. congress in yeah. Lagos. You have the Fuadu key faction. Mm. You have the Ambode faction. Correct. You have the Tinumu faction. No, no, no. So no. your party in Lagos seems to be factionalized. Un and you are one of the leaders. That's un why she's unless, asking you unless, which faction do you belong to. Unless we are not talking about APC Lagos State chapter. If you are talking about Lagos State APC chapter, there's just one faction and no two factions. Well, only one, two weeks ago, Fuadu key issued a statement saying that it's, indeed there is a faction in Lagos. He's, he's saying that. Okay, let me... And he says there is an attempt to uh, intimidate him and even assassinate him, <laughs> and that he will never keep quiet. No, no, yes, he can shout. Because he, he thinks say. Lagos State APC has been hijacked by one man, no, and he no. identified that man. No, no, no. Look, let me tell you, at the convention, at the Congress, mm. the State Congress, the, the, the team from the National Headquarters, came and the leader of the team immediately started with the fact that this is the only recognized venue for Lagos State Congress of APC. And in support of that, we had other team members and we had all law enforcement agencies and we had INEC representatives okay. in the attendance to watch the procedure. And they all assign, they all put their signatures to the proceedings, giving it stamp of authority. Whoever held any other thing outside that venue was illegal. So we have just one chapter. And it's on the basis of that that delegates were also elected to the national convention. Now ask the other fashions that you mentioned, were they at the convention were they accredited delegates at that convention so if they were not accredited delegates so that means the exercise which they claimed they held i don't know whether they actually did must be ultra bias null and void Permit that one. well are you saying ultra this bias, not because <laughs> another prominent member of the fuad or or in fact the man that is considered the brain behind it is yeah. your old driver uh, in your mushy uh, constituency, Moise Banere? Because in 2011, the two of you had very serious issues. So I don't expect you uh, to support the faction no. where Moise Banere belongs. No, to. It's, it's not about any individual at this time. I stand by it. Okay. In Lagos State, we have just one faction. There's none. You may have issues with individuals. You may have issues with the leadership. But that does not take the fact that we have just one faction. And we also have one sectariat, and that is ACME. That has been the traditional um, sectariat of the progressive movement from AD, AC, ACN, and now to APC. So a situation where we have some people who are feeling disgruntled for whatever reason, they, they cannot because of that break the fashion. Okay, now what are, what was their level of participation in the congresses? From what to local government to states and to the national convention? Where were they? So if they are nowhere to be found, then how can you claim to be part of a system where you did not feel sure at any point in time? Because it started from the uh, the world up to the national convention. So where are they? You okay. can't situate them in okay, any before, of the Okay, before provinces. I let you go, maybe uh, you will respond to the key issue raised by Fuad Oki. Yes, sir. He says that the APC in Lagos is being run like a one-man show. And know. that anybody who does not go to bow and scrape at body law, yes. you know, will be a victim, will be, will be targeted. Are you part of the body law, body law crowd? I, I don't agree with him. Okay. You see, we, 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 we have... Um, the leadership of um, APC, particularly in Lagos State, we have series. Of, we we have different levels. We have the governor, governors, advisory councils, where Ashwajo is the leader. Mm. And let me also remind you, when the issue of 
tenor and litigation at the national level was first mooted at APC. It was this GAC that rose up that we will not take that. And it was later echoed by other chapters of other states. And so that is what we have. Yes, we have in Ashwaju Bolamed Tinubu a leader. And he is truly a leader of leaders. And he has been able to make quite a large number of us, including myself. So I will give him his due respect. So okay. if anybody is having issues, now start to look. When do they start to have issues? Is it from beginning or just recently? So what is the cause of that issues, the issues they are having with him? So it's, at the end of the day, personal issues. Okay. Well, so, maybe, maybe we leave the uh, local issues alone. Right. The APC has been in power for more than three years. And That's he right. doesn't plan on defecting at all. So no, no, he's not. <laughs> he's still with APC. He's going to stay. Do you plan to rerun? Uh, well, no. No. You see, in AP, that is a good thing about Lagos State. Okay. We also have ways of doing our things. You, you just cannot wake up and say, yes, this is what I want, regardless of what every other person thinks. We come to the tables, okay, these are the things that are available, how many people are interested, okay, he's going to have it. So it makes our, our transition smooth and most times rank of free. That okay. does not mean we won't have people that are feeling bad, but we also, if you are progressing, if you are truly progressing, you would believe in the principle that the old is better than the sums of the parts, mm -hmm. and you will stick by that progressive, even where you don't get what you want at any point in time. Okay, but I mean, the question I, I wanted to ask you, the APC doesn't seem to be doing well in government. I don't agree. After three and a half years, many Nigerians are saying we enter the one chance bus. Well, I, I, won't saying, expect, I won't expect anything less from you, given your own background as well. What is my wow. background? Oh. I'm not a card carrying uh, politician. Wow. You are, you are no, I don't have I'm not, no. I'm a Well, no, these are facts I'm that are coming up now. And no, everyone no, knows no, that no, that's no, what's no, happening. So. No, no. <laughs> You are not going to use that to escape the question. No. <laughs> no, I, will, I will answer. Yeah, I've told you that I don't agree with that assertion that the APC has not done very well. He has done wonderfully well. And let, let's, let's take it. When the issues were being raised, when promises were being made, it was based on three factors. The security, corruption, and the economy. So let's take them one by one. The security. We've done better than we met the, 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 the security situation. And um, yes, we still have issues of Boko Haram here and there. But no, it's not Boko Haram. Hertzman. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's there's Hertzman, there's yes, Boko Haram. One. But the, the government is rising up to the situation by making sure that I mean, they are tackled uh, frontally. The issue of corruption, you agree with me that government is doing very well on that. And on the issue of economy, on the issue of economy, look, by the time the government came, this is not the issue of this is what we made. The economy was already going to eat the rock. And that is why immediately they came. The next fiscal year, we went into recession. It couldn't have been something that happened overnight. Mm -hmm. So it's a gradual process. But it we went into a situation the next physical year. And what is the situation now? We're now getting out of the out of the recession. That is because of the shrewd nation of the of the presidency. And because they also do those things that is necessary at the uh, the, the, the micro level, which later translates to the macro level. And you, you will agree with me. I mean, regardless of your position, that we're doing very well. And um, look at the empowerment program, the various <laughs> empowerment programs. I, I think Nigeria <laughs> has witnessed the worst no, time. You don't right want now. to push your own impression on me, but all me. <laughs> That's right. No, this is a fact. But we don't have more time. I could yes. have given you counter facts. Okay, I will come back. I could have yes, constructed we'll have the to counter have you back back. We'll, have to come back. We'll, we'll have you back okay. here again. Thank you for joining <laughs> you, us. I think we <laughs> yes. Will yes. you let Senator go? Thank, Thank you, you very much for joining us. Now, time for a short break. When we return, we'll have Stephanie Coca here to review the trending news. Stay with us.